Welcome to the Blessed Hope. This ministry is by our family. Every night we go through a particular part of the Bible as we study as a family, inviting you into our study. That the Bible says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I do these studies with my family so they can grow in the Lord, so they can know the Lord through the Word of God, by the Word of God, of the Word of God. And we invite you to listen. We ask that you use these videos for the edification of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that you abuse not these videos. We thank you. Revelation chapter 14. And I look, John, and lo, a lamb, capital L, Jesus Christ, stood on Mount Sion. Zion, Z, is the earthly. Sion with an S. Is the heavenly and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand sound familiar now wait a minute because we're, we're gonna do battle with, with a religion here you know you already know you can see me I'm gonna do this it says a lamb right but who is that lamb and the Jehovah Witnesses say they're 144,000 and yet they say are Jehovah Witnesses, but they show up these men, 144,000, with the Lamb. Now they don't believe Jesus is God. They don't believe God is Jesus. Then why are they showing up with the Lamb? Having his Father's name written in their foreheads, Jehovah, God. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters. God's voice, thunder, many waters, stream, a river flowing, maybe an ocean. So you know one of the things that you can buy a cassette tape or, or a electronic device to put by your bed that will soothe you off to sleep? Sound of waters, sound of waves. Electronic anti-vice of God's voice. As the, war, as the voice of great thunder. When God spoke with Jesus around, I believe it's the Gospel of John, he said it thundered. No, Jesus, no. It was God. And I heard the voice of harpers. Harping with their harps. And this is one of the places they get, you know, when we all get to heaven, we're going to be sitting on a cloud with harpers. No, that's not us. Now there are people there with harps. And they sung. So you got the 144,000, you got a voice out of heaven. And they, the 144,000, or the harpers, as it were a new song before the throne. Now we got singing going on. And before the four beasts and the elders, and no man can learn that song. Okay, so here we go. Back to the 144,000. Which were redeemed of the earth. So now we got a song going on in heaven, the 144,000. They've got their own special song. All the Jehovah Witnesses know what that song is. Ask them. Ask them to sing the song of 144,000. Because they sung it as a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. No man can learn that song but the, but the 144,000 that were redeemed in the earth. So ask them. You know what that song is? Only you guys are supposed to know if you're at 140. Prove them. First, we got to find out what tribe they are of the children of Israel. In the early book of Revelation, said they said they were Jews, but you found them to be liars. Now, ask them about their song. And they don't know anything about a song. They don't have a song, or their 144,000 don't have a song. They're liars again. Let's keep going. These are they which not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Were the 144,000 any of the first beginners of the Jehovah Witness, were they married? If they were married, and of the 144,000, you cannot be married and not be a virgin. You know what, this, you know what the Roman Catholic Church says the great sin of Mary is, it, by what they teach? Mary was a terrible wife. 
and was guilty of the law. Had she had no other relations with Joseph after Jesus was born? If she denied her husband Joseph the marriage bed, that violates the law. That violates... And you can't have a group of men here being married of the 144,000 and be virgins. Mary was a virgin until she knew her husband after Jesus was born. So go back and look up the 100. There are 144,000. You can find them out. And just, just, just check one or two of them, see if they're married. Or how many are married. And then again, you, you found a lie in their thing. And they'll find some way to teach out of it. These are they which follow the Lamb, capital L, whither so he goeth. That's kind of interesting because that Lamb is going to pick up and get on a horse and ride back to Jerusalem. But wherever the Lamb goes in heaven, here are the 144,000. You know what we think as a church? We think that we're going to go to heaven, we're going to stand before God, and God in Jesus Christ is going to give the church all the intention. No. We already see an arraignment that's going to be before, in between the throne of God, that the Lamb is going to feed them. And now we see the 144,000 are in front of the throne, worshiping with this brand new throne, and wherever the Lamb goes, they're going to go. And then you got the, the four beasts, and then you got the four and twenty-four elders, then you got the angels, then you got us. See, we in the lot of the scene church age, you know, we think we're poor, we think we're rich, we think we're great. We think all oh, heaven's gonna bow down before the lot of the scene church age. One of the songs we sung last night, we're gonna cast our crowns before him. I haven't seen that yet. You wanna give me chapter and verse? We gotta stop taking our scriptures from hymns and people who have opened their big mouth and don't know what the Bible says. So this is the hundred forty-four thousand that have been going through the tri tribulation preaching. Follow the land, whatsoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men. Remember, they were signed, sealed by the mark of Jehovah on their forehead. And everybody else, they had those, they had those uh, uh, locusts. With the scorpion tails. And they wanted to die for, for five months. They couldn't die. While these guys are going around preaching. I think you would get the attention of, of a person preaching the gospel. If you're in pain, you can't do nothing about it. While these guys are going around preaching. They can't lay your hands on these people. You're in pain. They lay their hands on Moses and Elijah. They burn up. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Capital L. Do you see what the Jehovah Witnesses have done by stealing Israel's testimony? That's a big sin. And in their mouth was found no guile like Jesus Christ, the Bible says. You get a Jehovah Witness mad enough? You'll find guile in their mouth. I have. For they are without fault before the throne of God. So, so all of us in the glory, what are we? we're going to be no fault, without fault. We're going to be sinless. They're going to be sinless. When we get to heaven, Satan's been cast out. Notice how they, they come before the throne after Satan's gone. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. We talked about it again. You don't have to fly to have wings. Having the everlasting gospel. Okay. We're going to come another problem here. To preach unto them that dwell on the earth. Or excuse me, dwell on the earth. And to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. So here is a gospel being preached by an angel. Remember Acts chapter 10 when that angel came to Cornelius and said, Cornelius, you've been heard. God, God has sent me to you. You've got to go get Peter. He's got to preach the gospel. 
Now we've got an angel in heaven in the tribulation period, and he's preaching the gospel. And this is where you get the angels in Mexico and South America being shown to people and, and by, the, by their religion, you know, you've got to worship him. Here's an angel saying with a loud voice. I like that loud voice. <laughs> He's street preaching. All righty. Here's what he's going to say. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Well, wait a minute. That's the gospel. That's what the gospel is we preach to all the world. That Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again according to... That's not, that's not the good news here. We have a thing where if I go knock on people's doors, they build an ark because the judgment of God's coming. Well, the Bible says it. So let's see what the tribulation period salvation is right now. Let's see what this gospel is of this angel. Fear God. Oh, well, okay. Sounds good. I fear God. People who get saved today fear God. They fear hell. And give glory to him. Great. For the hour of his judgment is come. Oh. Second coming here. The end of the seven years is coming. You don't want to be on this wrong side when he comes. If someone feared God and gave God the glory and received Christ as his Savior, the judgment to come would be the rapture and judgment seat of Christ. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Now we got trouble here. Because what has most of the world been taught today? Evolution. You have to, in the tribulation period with this gospel, you have to go against the grain and believe in God the creator. Then that, and it follows with Romans chapter 1. You got to tell the government school system and the college, you got to tell science, the religion, you're wrong. God made it. How hard is that? Well, hard, how hard is it a born again Bible believing Christian to stand up and preach for Jesus? So, how hard is it for someone to go against the grain? Evolution in the tribulation period will damn your soul. And you can't even believe theistic evolution. You know, God made it, then he sent it off to do whatever he wanted to do. And there followed another angel. Look at all the angels in the tribulation period. You know how Satan's got religion full today? Oh, upstate New York, I've seen this angel gave me sunglasses. Well, I was sitting here in the middle of the desert with a 13-year-old bride, and an angel showed up to me. And I got the feather of Michael. This is the wrong dispensation for angels telling you anything. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews, whereby we entertain angels unaware. Now, I'm not saying that God can't send somebody an angel and say, hey, listen, you got to go to this place and get a Bible in a Christian. I'm not saying God can't do that because he did it in Revelation 10. But angels, according to Paul, when he writes to the church, if they do not bring that gospel, they are defiled, they are wicked, they are sent to deceive you, and this is not the gospel. This is the gospel of the tribulation period. This angel can do what, he, what he's doing. We're in a new dispensation. So you tell me if the church is going through all this, now you got to believe creation. Saying Babylon is fallen. Now, now this is remarkable because if you go over there, 1 Peter chapter 5. The church that is in Babylon, elect together with you, saluteth you, and so does Marcus my son. The Roman Catholic Church says, hey, there we are. There's the first Pope. He's in Babylon. He's there. Saying Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Well, that's not us. We're over there, but we're not here. And if fallen is fallen is a verily, verily. This is important information. 
Babylon is falling. There will be a Babylon. Physical name Babylon? I don't know. But study Babylon. It's all kinds of religions. All religions come out of Babylon. It's a false state. It was had a image that if you didn't worship, you went into the flames of a furnace. If you prayed a certain time, you were put into a lion's den. The great city, because she had made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The fornication, you just having sex with all the world with your religion. You you have jumped into the bed like Jezebel. We saw it in the churches. When America allows the Pope to come over here and kiss and romance and take in a back seat, God says that's fornication. When that religion goes all over the world and allows that guy opportunity to, you're fornicating. The Bible says, listen, as a nation, Romans 13, if you want to do right according to the law, a nation can follow the law. You're to get that junk out of your out of your nation. Now, a Christian can't do it, but the nation can. When you allow this guy going around, when you allow Islam to come into your country, and they're just a fine, great religion, when you allow the, a religion that, you know, they violate the Bible, they, they violate the nature of man to have multiple wives, that's fornication. Fornication is not just a sexual sin. It's being involved with other religions. And the, the Baptist church today is involved with fornication because it has the Catholic church in them. And even some of our hymns come from Roman Catholic writers. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice. There's that loud voice again. If any man worship the beast and his image, read that previous chapter, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Now, what is the wrath of God today according to, according to John the Baptist? He that has not the Son has not life, but shall see the wrath of God abiding upon him. What is the wrath of God at this point, the great tribulation? You have received that mark. You are worshiping that image, and you've given worship to the beast. It looks like once you receive that mark, you can't undo it. That's what it looks like. There's no cause for any man in the church age that whatever you do, you, you are beyond saving. You are beyond hope. You know, they'll say that... Uh, Oh, what is it? Uh, unpardonable sin. That could not be done and only when Jesus was living. This can't be done in the church age. It can only be done in the great tribulation period. You can't apply this to the church. you got to be three and a half years into the great tribulation period. Pour out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels. The angels can see people burning in hell. And in the presence of the Lamb, capital L. Men in hell are burning in the presence of God and the angels. So I assume if they can see them, they can see Jesus Christ. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night. Who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. It looks like that there's a greater damnation for those that receive the mark. More than anybody else who's in hell. And there are different degrees and penalties of hell. The Bible speaks of the lowest hell. Listen, a man 
whose life was bad. Let's take a let's take a man from from, from maybe his teenager. He was homeless. He, he just homeless, no life at all. Didn't do nothing much. Did not trust Jesus Christ. Heard the gospel some way, just rejected, and just a homeless man, not a bum, just homeless. Didn't do nothing in his life. He will die and go into hell and burn in hell for eternity for rejecting Christ. You get a Roman Catholic priest who, who has, or any religious priest, any religious pastor, anybody, a rabbi, anybody of authority that guides people away from God, away from the Bible, away from Jesus Christ, he is going to get a greater damnation than that, that, that homeless man. Because that homeless man, just he just rejected Jesus Christ at the preaching of the gospel. But that man who has led people astray, away from God, turned them away from the life and the light and Jesus Christ. Man, they're going to get greater damnation. Now these people who get the mark, greater damnation. And the smoke of their torment send up forever and ever. They have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receives the mark of his name. And in, in Luke 16 it says torment, tormenting, torments, tormented. Here it says torment. Describe hell. The Bible says torment. Here is the patience of the saints. He, uh, here are they that keep the commandments of God, the law, and the faith of Jesus, the blood. Works and faith. you got to do both. That's not the church age. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. You do right, you die in the Lord. Blessed are you. Yea, saith the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, works, and their works, works, do follow them. And the books were open, and they were judged according to their works. So if people die doing what they're supposed to be doing by works, it is good that they're going to die because they're doing right. And the invocation of this verse shows it's only going to get worse and worse until Jesus comes. So it's better you die early. In the three and a half, in the three and a half last years of tribulation. The quicker you die, the better you are if you die right. It's going to get worse. Never mind starving and you can't do nothing unless you, it's going to get worse. And I looked and beheld a white cloud. What's the name for a toilet company? And upon the cloud one sat like unto the sun, capital S, of man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice. There's that loud voice. To him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap. And sickle is used for gathering. It's a cutting. For the time is come for thee to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. And Jesus told his parables. When the tares and wheat grow together, wait for the harvest in the, in the <coughs> excuse me. wait for the harvest when he, he'll send his angels. And he'll harvest up the, the tares and burn them. And he'll harvest up the wheat and gather into his barn. Here we go. We are now, right now, the set coming on to the seventh year of the tribulation. And he that sat on the cloud thrusted his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped in judgment, separation, sheep and goats. 
And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. Two sharp sickles. And another angel came out from the altar. Which had power over fire. And cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle. Saying, thrust in thy sickle. That sharp sickle. And gathered the cluster of the vine of the earth. For her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. Now this is kind of interesting because he said grapes, vine. These are the enemies of God, like to be grapes. And the wine press was trotted and he stepped all over without the city, not in Jerusalem, outside Jerusalem. And the blood, talk about new wine, when they're smashed, they're making wine. That's how you make grapes. That's what you do to make wine. You put the grapes in the, in the wine press and you bound them. Blood came out of the wine press. Even unto the horses' bridles. Now, you know how deep that is? That's got to be like three, four, five feet. By the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. And they say one furlong is 582 feet. And this chapter. We come to the world has been harvested. We see two sickles here. The good ones have been gathered first. The bad ones have been gathered as grapes and thrown into a wine press, and Jesus Christ stumps them. Now try to tell me God is love, and He is love. But look at the wrath of God. He's stepping all over His enemies. He's turning them into blood. And that's that's the end of that's near the end of the seven years. It's not going to be a pretty picture. And we're right behind them. And Joel says we're going to keep our ranks. That baby Jesus is here killing people who will not receive him. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay, and here it is. And guess what? Men do not have a chance. What are you going to do? Throw an ICBM at Jesus? That ain't going to do you no good, because he's never going to die again, Hebrew says. And we're never going to die again. This is the ultimate thing for wicked men death and hell all technology all the advancements that man has made death and hell and Jesus Christ is victorious glory to God